all that you need. The dose of this vitamin J. Vitamin J. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Vitamin G Gaming Podcast yeah, we're live now. with your host, FC Violent. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, why is my thing going off like that? Oh, shit. The meme just keeps going off. Now we're good. I think we're good. All right. What's going on, everybody? This is impromptu stream of the PS5 announcement. It's me and Omar at the moment. I hear us. I hear you, Mimi. So you don't have anybody hey, that wants to come, just let you know. Let me know. There's some people in here. Quiet right now. Go on Discord. Uh, shit, how do we search? Like, I gotta search people and shit. Okay. I don't think I have dirt. I the dirt. What's your name? Game. Who else we got? The, uh, Restore Hades. Omar, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I can't hear Can shit. Hear me? Omar. Hello, hello. I hear you. What's going on, man? What's up, Dirt? What's up, uh, Hades? Oh. Oh. My oh, bad. Quiet. My, uh, my, oh, no, I can't hear what's you, bro. called? Hold on, let me. Uh, can you hear me now? Do something with my settings real quick. Can you hear me now? Hello, 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 hello. I can't, I can't hear, hear anybody. anybody. Oh, oh, that's, that's why. why. Yo, can you hear me now? My Discord, I'm muted myself. You're low. Oh, there we go. Now it's here. Okay, so it's starting in one minute and 25 seconds. Come on. It's up now. Oh, you switch it over. Yeah. It's too loud. Let me turn it down. It's about to start. Can you all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, my bad. My uh, blue, uh, uh, blue snowball was far ahead, far away.
So what are you expecting? I don't you know, are man. Or legit breakdown? Uh, shit, I don't know, man. I think they, I think they're gonna just talk about the specs. So you don't though. think you don't think it's going to be like Xbox? It may be, but I don't know. Because the digital founders, they, they sent people out. So I don't know if they're going to do the exact same thing. Oh, we got someone new in here. What's going on? I don't know how to read that. Oh, Alam. Oh, okay. I know. It's Arabic. It's, it's called Alam. There we go. Alam. Um, but we do have some super exciting news about PS5. Uh, and who better to bring that to you than the one and only Mark Cerny. Without further ado, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Jim. There will be lots of chances later on this year to look at the PlayStation 5 games. Today, I want to talk a bit about our goals for the PlayStation 5 hardware and how they influenced the development of the console. I think you all know I'm a big believer in console generations. Once every five or six or seven years, a console arrives with substantially new capabilities. There's a lot of learning by the game developers, hopefully not too overwhelming, and soon there's games that could never have been created before. Now, it used to be that as a console designer, you'd somehow intuit what would be the best set of capabilities for the new console, and then build it in complete secrecy. For the PlayStation consoles, that period lasted through PlayStation 3, a powerful and groundbreaking console, but also one that caused quite a lot of heartache as it was initially difficult to develop games for. So starting with PlayStation 4, we've taken a different approach, roughly centered around three principles. The first of these is listening to the developers, which is to say that a lot of what we put into a console derives directly from the needs and aspirations of the game. Yo, his voice we does really put you to sleep. <laughs> At the core of our philosophy for designing consoles is that game players are... If you invite Pharaoh and Nubs, please. Games, ...which is to say that game creators matter. Anything we can do to make life easier for the game creators or help them realize their dreams, we will do. So, about once every two years... This guy years sounds like a super nerd. In the industry, ...I go to the various developers and publishers, sit down, and discuss how they're doing with the current consoles and what they'd like to see in future consoles. This requires weeks on the road, as reaching the bulk of the game creators That's involves it. talking to well over 100 people. It's something like... So, he actually had a hands-on with... And it is trending. incredibly valuable. By the way, the feature most requested by the developers, that was an SSD which we were very happy to put in the hardware, but a lot of problem solving was required. I'll be doing a deep dive on the SSD and surrounding systems later on in this talk. It's also key to make a generational leap while keeping the console sufficiently familiar to game developers. I think about this in terms of balancing evolution and revolution. Now, with PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, the target was a revolution each time with a brand new feature set. That was great in many ways, You're but pretty low, bro. You got a uh, booster mic. Running got longer with each console. In the past, I've called this time to triangle. Here's what I had for those three consoles. To be clear, I'm not talking about time to make a game. Developers will be ambitious, and it may take them six years or so to realize their vision. What I'm talking about is that Yo, dead time is before graphics and other aspects this nigga born as hell, bro. are up and running, and trying to minimize that. On the other hand, if we're trying to reduce that dead time to zero, that means the hardware architecture can't change at all. We're He's like, he like works at a hotel or something, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the front desk. And whether it's worth the increase in developer time so, needed. He is very good at his job, though. So with PlayStation 4, we were able to strike a pretty good balance between performance and familiarity. We got required. Now, I mean, you could tell he's smart, but then. With PS5. Speaking wise, that motherfucker is born. A technique that is now being used all over the place called dot not dot. Ultimately, I think we've ended up with something under a month of getting up to speed. That feels like we're striking about the right balance. I'll go into a bit more detail later today about our philosophy with the GPU and the specific feature set that resulted from it. It's also very important for us as the hardware team to find... Tom Warren just leaked some stuff. I, mean I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. CPU performance, GPU performance, and the amount of RAM. The increase in graphics performance over the past two decades has been astonishing, but say, there are other areas in which we can innovate and provide significant... Hey, I'm going to send it to the Facebook group. ...and through them 
the players. That's why the SSD was very much on Actually, I'm just going to add you. to explore, regardless of what came out of the conversations with game developers and publishers. You're going to end the stream? This category is the No, no, no. I don't want to ruin it for people who are watching it. I'm just going to add you and the Twitter. Push for vastly improved Okay. Audio. And I actually uh, moved, away, moved away from your link. Case that we I'm working now on a different link be because I kept hearing myself all over again. And then worked out a number of steps we could take to set us on that path. So here again are the three principles. The first being enabling the desires of developers to drive oh, the hardware To me, Can you hear me, SSD really is the key to the next generation. It's yeah, here. a game changer. Okay. And it was the number one ask from developers for PlayStation 5. As in, we know it's probably impossible, but can you put an SSD in it? That was a discussion. Yo, invite Pharaoh, bro. Internally. It was clear that the presence of a hard drive in every PlayStation 4 was having a positive impact. A lot of things. You want me to invite Pharaoh? Possible. Yeah, whoever has them on the front list. Let me see. I don't have them on the but they were having these conversations. Developers were already banging up against the limits of the hard drive, and a lot of developer time was being spent designing around slow load speeds. I need all the kneecaps. I want to focus in on just one number here, which is how long it takes to load a gigabyte of data from a hard drive. The difficulty being that hard drives are neither particularly fast nor flexible. If all your Stop. data is in one block, which is frankly not very likely, you can load 50 to 100 megabytes a second, depending on where the data is located on the hard drive. Let's assume it's on the outer edge, which means loading a gigabyte takes 10 seconds. If you compress your game packages, you can fit more data on the Blu-ray disc and also effectively boost your hard drive read speed by the compression ratio. We support Zlib decompression on PlayStation 4 that gets you something like 50% more data on the disk and 50% higher effective read speed. Unfortunately, though, it's highly likely that your data is scattered around in various behind, files I'm watching your stream, as well like as YouTube. sourced from multiple locations within those links. files. So lots of seeks are needed at 2 to 50-ish milliseconds each. My rule of thumb oh, it's is that a website? the hard drive is spending two-thirds yes. of its time seeking. I'm watching it off the PlayStation joint. third of its time actually yeah, loading data. Blog. Putting like all of that together, website. a all gigabyte right. is very Check roughly 20 no, 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 I'm on what PlayStation YouTube. Okay. Now, a gigabyte is not much data. Games are using five or six gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation 4, so boot times and load times can get pretty grim. Or to put that differently, as a player, you wait for the game to boot, wait for the game to load, wait for the level to reload every time you die, and you wait for what is euphemistically called Bro. fast travel. And all of that leads to the dream. What if we could have not just an SSD, but a blindingly fast SSD? If we could load five mm -hmm. gigabytes a I second. I literally from, want somebody to come on change? this stage and now, spark and SSDs kick this are completely chest different and from hard They system. don't have seeks as such. Well, if you have a five gigabyte a second SSD, you can read data from a thousand different locations in that second, pretty much at speed. As for time to load a gigabyte, this yo, whoever is donated, bro, respect. I appreciate the five dollars, man. Thank you. Asking how long to load two Whoever the fuck. And the answer is about a quarter of a second. And that's amazing. We're talking two orders of magnitude, meaning very roughly 100 times faster. Which means at five gigabytes a second for the SSD, the potential is that the game boots in a second. They put there up are no math equations the on the damn screen like down give while a loading fuck. a half dozen gigabytes and fades back up again. Bro, have have Same for a reload, you're out. immediately it's back in the action after you die. And fast travel becomes so fast it's blink and you miss it. As Bro, what the fuck is this? Go from trying to distract the player from yeah, that thing? fast travel is taking, like those Spider-Man subway rides, is to being so blindingly in the fast that we might even have like to... He on the clock, bro, just like me. Pretty cool, right? But for me, this is not the primary reason to change from a hard drive to an SSD. The primary reason for an ultra-fast SSD is that it gives the game design. No, it's not cool freedom. at all. Show me the system. Or to put that differently, with a hard drive, the 20 seconds that it takes to load a gigabyte can sabotage the game that the developer is trying to create. Bro. 
I think Fan boys all not going to care about a tiny release game we sleep. Maybe in different ways. So we're Yo, making facts. an adventure game, and we have two rich environments where we each want enough yeah, textures and models to fill memory. Which you can do as long as you have a long staircase or elevator ride or a windy corridor where you can ditch the old assets and then take 30 seconds or so to load the new assets. Having a 30 second elevator ride is a, a little extreme. More realistically, we'd probably chop the world into a number of smaller pieces and then do some calculations with sight lines and run speeds. Can you guys hear me? Did for Haven yeah, we're gonna hear you. Yeah, way better. The game is 20 years old, but not much has changed. I had to adjust the setting. All those I had to put it in communication. This man is disgusting There's me right now. There's a whole subset being. of level design dedicated to this sort of work, but still, it's a giant distraction for a team that just wants That's to make like, their game. Out the fucking stage, so when I talked about this the, the best they got over there, Sony. Part of the reason for that five gigabyte a second target was to eliminate. Levels. Omar was by himself, man. He's trying to get the his Sony back up, but nobody came through, man. As we're Tyler. Uh, we're uh, uh, Tyler. So sleep. He tried to watch as it. As the player is turning. Around. It's possible <laughs> to watch watching on different streams. That's why. Split second. If you figure that it takes half a second to turn, that's four gigabytes of compressed data you can load. That sounds about right. For next year. I just want to see an example. Like he's talking. Like, can he show an example? Another strategy for increasing. This is the example. About to make big sequential Damn, this is too much math. I'm, I'm talking about like actually showing it. For each city block. But he is about to. You need to get there. The streaming gets faster. He's not going to watch it. All right, fair enough. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. This is going to be like when they show the logo. And it's going to be just like that. They're going to do all this, and then they're going to walk off the stage. Marvel Spider-Man uses the strategy, and though it works very well for increasing the streaming speed. There's a massive duplication as a result. Some of the objects, like mailboxes or news racks, are on Why are we talking about PS4 shit? Because there's nothing to talk about the PS5. Well, hold on. Now. To be fair, this is meant for the GDC, so it's supposed to be meant for talking to other developers. So this is like developer speak. Yeah. And Xbox skipped all this trash, though. Nah, the stack, the stacks was a GDC speak too. That shit was boring as well, man. I just, I, I stopped watching it. And finally, I'm talking about like their deep dive into the actual hardware on Monday. Like they skipped all this time to install the patch. That's yeah, the dude that, that did the deep dive the on the Xbox, the new data she presented way better from his desk than this dude. But before the game boots up, and I think that was kind of impromptu. That, that dude is not much Mark Zenny, this is his job. Or two. This is literally his job. He created the True, he's the architect. Yeah, true. They start to hitch once they get patched enough. Dang. With an SSD, though, no seeks. So no need to make brand new files with the changes incorporated into them which means no installs as you know them today. There's yet one more benefit, which is that system memory can be used much more efficiently. On PlayStation 4, game data on the hard drive feels very distant and difficult to use. By the time you realize you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. That means a lot of the eight gigabytes of system memory is idle. It's just waiting there to be potentially used. On PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Typically, it's fast enough that when you realize you need a piece of data, you can just load it from the SSD and use it. There's no need to have lots of data parked in system memory waiting to potentially be used. A different way of saying that is that most gigabyte. of RAM is working is that on the game's behalf. Is that one you? of the reasons that 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 feels right. They both, that, it looks like they both have 16. The presence of the SSD reduces the need for a massive intergeneration yeah. increase. Okay. Inside. So back to the dream of the SSD. Here's the set of targets. Boot the game in a second. No load screens. Design freedom, meaning no twisty passages. Oh, wait. Or Was there data? I'm, I'm, more game on the mind, more wait. game on the SSD. 16 gigabytes. Those patch no. installs go away. The reality, though, is that the SSD is ultra just fast one boot, piece of no load screen. There's screens. a lot of places ultra where the fast, ultra high speed streaming. The streaming code that uses the data. You can see this on PlayStation 4. No long patch install. No. Ten times the speed of a standard hard drive. I probably see only double the loading. I see they're using that. decompression tech too. So PlayStation 5. Our so goal they're going for the speed. That the SSD itself be a hundred times faster. 
it was that game loads and streaming would be a hundred times faster. You're saying the SSD is not one terabyte? Like what? Like anybody know what the actual they, uh, they didn't facts on that? Give, they they didn't give the amount of terabyte yet. How, how far are you guys? Like what are you seeing on your screen? We're seeing now God of War 100 times faster. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on the check-in okay. memory. I'm just looking on Twitter. They must be ahead of me. I told you, bro, just go directly to their site, man. That's, uh, that that's about right. Part. Moving the data, meaning copying it from one location to another. Reggie, yeah, need to I'm running straight to the PlayStation website because if I can get ahead of that's, this that's shit, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. The yeah, if all shit the ridiculous. overheads get a hundred times. Shit, dry, dry. As the player moves and that mass. Yo, post it. I don't. I don't see their blog. Like, where is it? The SSD. So to yeah, solve post all that, we built a lot chat of custom can. hardware, namely a custom flash controller and Oops. a number of custom units in our main chip. PlayStation blog. The flash if, controller if you type in, if you Google PlayStation, was designed for blog, smooth right and bottleneck right. operation, but also oh, with games in mind. For example, there are six levels namely, of priority a custom flash reading controller reading. and a number of custom units in our main chip. It's not that much the flash behind, controller in the SSD was the same designed for thing. smooth and bottleneck-free operation, but also with games in mind. For example, there are six levels of priority when reading from the SSD. Priority oh, yeah, is very important. You can imagine the player Xbox. heading yeah. into some new location in the world and the game requesting a, a few right, gigabytes bridge. of textures. And while those textures are being loaded, an enemy is shot I'm glad and has to speak Nintendo a few doesn't dying waste words. Your time telling us about Having multiple priority levels lets the audio for those dying words get loaded immediately. On one side, that flash controller connects to the actual flash dies that supply the storage. To reach our bandwidth target of five gigabytes a second, we ended up with a 12-channel interface. Eight channels wouldn't be enough. The resulting bandwidth we've achieved is actually five and a half gigabytes a second. With a 12-channel interface, the most natural size that emerges for an SSD is 825 gigabytes. The key question for us was, is that enough? I mean, it's tempting to add more, but Flash certainly doesn't come cheap, and we have a responsibility to our gaming audience to be cost-effective with regards to what we put. No, you're going to have a field day on Facebook, time. bro. Ultimately, we resolved this question by looking at the play patterns of a broad range of gamers. No, we examined the specific games that they were playing yeah, over the course you. of a weekend or a week. No, I'm saying Nub's going to have a field day on <laughs> Facebook. First, first, first link on their blog website. I'm going to throw it in. We yeah, I got it. I'm on it. I'm on it now. That the friction cost I don't know why they waited so long to downloads would be quite to reveal it. This, was, we like, this is your uh, event that you planned on revealing it at? Oh my gosh, this is bad for the customer. So that this, is for, I get, this is for, all right, listen guys, this is for developers. It's not really for us. I get what you're saying. I understand that. On the other side, yeah, why is it bad? Okay. Main custom chip, I'm saying, four lanes, let's go point. I don't know. This is a, this is a bad first and reveal. Inside the main custom chip for the consumer, pretty, like a like, hefty unit. Oh, I see. I see what I see what you mean. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. Before we talk about, on, I got the let's talk compression. The, the entire yeah. compression is 52 best minutes long. We decided so, to use it again on PlayStation 5. We just started. On my 2017 tour of developers, I learned about they a new format called They should have definitely. It's like Zlib's smarter. Should not be brought. Simple, uh, similar <laughs> yeah, types they of should have done this. But they should have revealed the system sooner. Compression, which is so that people who cared about the intricate details the could watch this. Ray disc or and like, oh, okay. Kraken hope, uh, you think they're going to show it? Because I want to I see it. This nigga's talking about the Kraken. I do believe they're, they're going to show the PlayStation on the end. Or getting ready they're going to show the logo. So we hustled and Walk built off. This man went see thieves on us. Fuck the Kraken. One capable of handling over five gigabytes. They're going to show us the, they're gonna show us the logo and walk up the stage. After decompression, See, that's that typically that becomes eight E3 or nine gigabytes. But the unit itself that, is capable you know, of outputting as much as 22 gigabytes a second it. if the data happened to compress particularly well. Benji By the way, sales. in terms of performance, that custom decompressor equates to nine of our Zen. Right, I'm going to let y'all run it for bed. I got to make some calls. To decompress the crack and stream with a conventional CPU. Shout out to the chat for coming more. through, man. Shout out to you guys. Omar's friend, uh, Alam, Arizona Made Gamer, Cali Rex, Restore Hades. Shout out to you guys. To send the data coming His off name is Ali. This equates to an Ali, I apologize. Two core or two no, no problem. Its, copy performance. its primary purpose is to remove check in as a bottleneck. <laughs> There's two dedicated I.O. coprocessors and a large RAM pool. These aren't Zen 2 cores. They are there principally to direct the variety of custom hardware around them. One of the coprocessors is dedicated to SSD I.O. This lets us bypass traditional file I.O. and its bottlenecks when reading from the SSD. 
The other is responsible for memory mapping, which I know doesn't sound like anything related to the SSD, but a lot of developers map and remap memory as part of file I.O., and this too can become a bottleneck. There are coherency engines to assist the co-processor. Coherency comes up a lot in places. Probably the biggest coherency issue is stale data in the GPU caches. Flushing all of the GPU caches whenever the SSD is read is an unattractive option. It could really hurt the GPU performance. So we've implemented a gentler way of doing things where the coherency engines inform the GPU of the overwritten address ranges and custom scrubbers in several dozen GPU caches do pinpoint evictions of just those address ranges. The best thing is, as a game developer, when you read from the SSD, you don't need to know any of this. You don't even need to know that your data is compressed. You just indicate what data you'd like to read from your original uncompressed file and where you'd like to put it and the whole process of loading it in, happens invisibly to you and at very high speed. Back to the dream. Thanks to all of that surrounding hardware, our 5.5 gigabytes a second really should translate into something like 100 times faster I.O. than PS4 and allow the dream of no load screens and super fast streaming to become a reality. Having said that, expandability of our SSD is going to be quite important. Flash is costly, and you may very well want to add storage to whatever we put in the console. Now, the kind of storage you need depends on how you're going to use it. If you have an extensive PlayStation 4 library and you'd like to take advantage of backwards compatibility to play those games on PlayStation 5, then a large external hard drive is ideal. You can leave your games on the hard drive and play them directly from there, thus saving the pricier SSD storage for your PlayStation 5, 5 title. Is 10 teraflops. Or you can copy your active PlayStation 4 titles to the SSD. And day two. If your purpose in adding more storage is to play PlayStation 5 titles, though, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 SSDs. These are internal drives that you can get on the open market and install in a bay in the PlayStation 5. As for which ones we support and when, I'll get to that in a moment. They connect through the custom I.O. unit just like our SSD does. So they can take full advantage of the decompression, I.O. coprocessors, and all the other features I was talking about. Here's the catch though. That commercial drive has to be at least as fast as ours. Games that rely on the speed of our SSD need to work flawlessly with any M2 drive. When I gave I the wire that if the here, I said that the PlayStation 5 is faster than anything available VGP on PC. Shot. At the time, commercial so, drives used PCIe. Xbox I.O. is a little bit slower than their I.O. by about a gig. In other words, no PCIe 3.0 drive can hit the required spec. RDNA drives PCIe 4.0 are now out in the market. We're getting our in. Uh, Do you know how expensive a drive for this is going to be? A second from them. By year's end, I expect there will be drives that saturate 4.0 and support 7 gigabytes a second. Having said that, we are comparing apples and oranges, though, because that commercial M2 drive will have its own architecture, its own flash controller, and so on. For example, the NVMe specification lays out a priority scheme for requests that the M2 drives can use. And that scheme is pretty nice but it only has two true priority levels. Our drive supports six. We can hook up a drive with only two priority levels, definitely, but our custom I.O. unit has to arbitrate the extra priorities rather than the M2 drive's flash controller. And so the M2 drive needs a little extra speed to take care of issues arising from the different approach. That commercial drive also needs to physically fit inside of the bay we created in PlayStation 5 for M2 drives. Unlike internal hard drives, there's unfortunately no standard for the height of an M2 drive. And some M2 drives have giant heat sinks. In fact, Yo, some of them everything this heat man heat. is saying is terrible. Right now, we're getting M2 drive samples and benchmarking them in various ways. When games hit beta as they get ready for the PlayStation 5 launch, for us event, it we'll is, also be doing but for them they understand it. To make sure that the architecture yeah, no, no, I meant like M2 he's saying like you have to get a very end. specific commercial M.2 drive if you want to expand your storage. You start letting you know like this is stupid. Like there's gonna, th this is gonna fuck consumers up if they, if you know, there's a checklist that they gotta meet to try to get the right drive to expand storage in the standard. It's likely to be a bit past it, so please hold off 
on getting that M2 drive until you hear from us. They don't even have okay, a set. They, they don't even have a set specification Balancing list yet. Like, that's a problem. Like I can see why Xbox is like, here, okay, here's a proprietary a drive. We'll take out the middleman, and you don't have to look for it. It's just this. We need new like, this is going to be an issue for capabilities. If if we only have more performance, it's not really a new generation of console. Of course, many of these capabilities result in more performance. That's part of why a PlayStation 5 teraflop is more powerful than a PlayStation 4 teraflop. But we aren't just looking for the performance. We also I feel like need he's the just ability trying to, explain to do something to developers. with the GPU that could not have been done before. Why does shit and we still need higher performance for what? Every time we double the performance of some... It's GPU not, I mean, the only thing they have right now is the I.O. speed. The power consumed um, and the heat produced. As far as being able to but read shit, like Xbox is like 4 point some sure gigs, theirs is 5 point some gigs. So that, like, they do have a speed advantage and in, in I.O. operation. I mean, it's, it's cool if you got one part now, of your system backwards compatibility that's more powerful than the other Right, so games will load faster on PS5. That's fine. As our but everything else, new features without blindsiding developers, we made sure that if there were new significant features, it would be optional to use them. The GPU supports ray tracing, but you don't have Another to use ray tracing to make well, your game. This is all about PlayStation the GPU today, supports so primitive shaders, but you can release your first game on PlayStation 5 without that. making any use of them. Before I get into the capabilities of we'll the GPU, I'd like to make clear two points that can be quite confusing. First, we have a custom AMD GPU based on their RDNA 2 technology. Right, what does go. that mean? AMD is continuously improving and revising their tech. For RDNA 2, their goals were, roughly speaking, to reduce power consumption by re-architecting the GPU to put data close to where it's needed, to optimize the GPU for performance, and to add a new, more advanced feature set. But that feature set is malleable, which is to say that we have our own needs for PlayStation, and that can factor into what the AMD roadmap becomes. So collaboration is born. If we bring concepts to AMD that are felt to be widely useful, then they can be adopted into RDNA 2 and used broadly, including in PC GPUs. If the ideas are sufficiently specific to what we're trying to accomplish, like the GPU cache scrubbers I was talking about, then they end up being just for us. If you see a similar discrete GPU available as a PC card at roughly the same time as we release our console, that means our collaboration with AMD succeeded uh, in producing technology useful in both worlds. It doesn't mean that we as Sony simply incorporated the PC part into our console. This continuous improvement in AMD technology means it's dangerous to rely on teraflops as an absolute indicator of performance, and CU count should be avoided as well. In the case of CPUs, we all understand this. The PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 each have eight CPUs, but we never think that meant the capabilities and performance are equal. It's the same for CUs. For one thing, they've been getting much larger over time. Adding new features means adding lots of transistors. In fact, uh, the transistor count for a PlayStation 5 CU is 62% larger than the transistor count for a PlayStation 4 CU. Second, the PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. What does that oh. mean? One way you can achieve backwards compatibility is to put the previous console's chipset in the new console, like we did with some PlayStation 3s. Okay. But that's, of course, extremely expensive. A better way is to incorporate any differences in the previous console's logic into the new console's custom chips, meaning that even as the technology evolves, the logic and feature set that PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro titles rely on is still available in backwards compatibility modes. One advantage of this strategy is that once backwards compatibility is in the console, it's in. It's not as if a cost down will remove backwards compatibility like it did on PlayStation 3. Achieving this unification of functionality took years of efforts by AMD, as any roadmap advancement creates a potential divergence in logic. Running PS4 and PS4 titles at boosted frequencies has also added complexity. The boost is truly massive this time around, and some game code just can't handle it. Testing has to be done on a title-by-title -title basis. Results are excellent, though. We recently took a look at the top 100 PlayStation 4 titles as ranked by Playtime, and we're expecting 
almost all of them to be playable at launch on PlayStation 5. Mm. So it's built into only the chip, but only certain games. Our strategy was well, get to try to break new ground, get the fuck but at the same out of here. I knew that they weren't going to have a solution for of the new GPU capability. That's retarded. I'm sorry. It's for more retarded. than a decade, GPUs They can't do it. They don't have the software engineers to do this. Software handles they can't make a fucking PS4 for emulator for whatever reason. It shouldn't be the fuck. ...for the triangles and other geometry that the vertices form. That means it's not possible to do even basic optimizations, such as aborting... <laughs> and this is why Xbox will be the king of backwards possible. compatibility. And PlayStation 5 is right. a new unit PlayStation called PlayStation people Geometry, always dream about old games they wish they could play other primitives under full their new systems. Control. As a game developer, you're free to ignore its existence and use the PlayStation 5 GPU as if it were no more capable than the PS4 GPU, or you can use this new intelligence in various ways. Simple usage could be performance optimization, such as removing back-faced or off-screen vertices and triangles. More complex usage involves something called primitive shaders, which allow the game to synthesize geometry on the fly as it's being rendered. It's a brand new capability. Using primitive shaders on PlayStation 5 will allow for a, a broad variety of techniques, including smoothly varying level of detail, addition of procedural detail to close-up objects, and improvements to particle effects and other visual special effects. Another major new feature of our custom RDNA 2-based GPU is ray tracing, using the same strategy... Oh, I'm glad they finally used RDNA 2 in a sentence. The CUs contain they did earlier. a new specialized unit called the intersection. When they talked about the chip. Which can calculate the I might have been on a call when that was happening. And triangles. It was literally like five minutes ago. Engine, but yeah. First you build yeah, I was on a call. An acceleration okay. structure. It's so I could only look at the slide. All of your I couldn't hear it. There's a specific set of formats you can use. They're variations on the same BVH concept. Then, in your shader program, you use a new instruction that asks the intersection engine to check array against the BVH. While the intersection engine is processing the requested ray triangle or ray box intersections, the shaders are free to do other work. Having said that, the ray tracing instruction is pretty memory intensive, so it's a good mix with logic heavy code. There's of course no need to use ray tracing. PS4 graphics engines will run just fine on PlayStation 5. But it presents it's no need to use ray tracing. It's interested. good to know. I'm thinking it'll take Learn less than every day. Now we just need to see what the lock card is. Audio. That should be enough for audio this, occlusion this, this and chap reverb calculations. With a bit more of the GPU invested in ray tracing, it should be possible to do some very nice global illumination. Having said that, Adding ray traced shadows and reflections to a traditional graphics engine could easily take hundreds of millions of rays a second, and full ray tracing could take billions. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a PlayStation 5 title that's successfully using ray tracing based reflections in complex animated scenes with only modest costs. Another set of issues for the GPU involved size and frequency. How big do we make the GPU, and what frequency do we run it at? This is a balancing act. The chip has a cost, and there's a cost for whatever we use to supply that chip with power and to cool it. In general, I like running the GPU at higher frequency. Let me show you why. Here's two possible configurations for a GPU roughly of the level of the PlayStation 4 Pro. This is a thought experiment. Don't take these configurations too seriously. If you just calculate teraflops, you get the same number. But actually, the performance is noticeably different because teraflops is defined as the computational capability of the vector ALU. That's just one part of the GPU. There are a lot of other units. And those other units all run faster when the GPU frequency is higher. At 33% higher frequency, rasterization goes 33% faster. Processing the command buffer goes that much faster. The L2 and uh, other caches have that much higher bandwidth, and so on. About the only downside is that system memory is 33% further away in terms of cycles. But the large number of benefits more than counterbalance that. As a friend of mine says, a rising tide lifts all boats. Also, it's easier to fully use 36 CUs in parallel than it is to fully use 48 CUs. When triangles are small, it's much harder to fill all those CUs. Stop making excuses small. for your hardware, man. So Just there's tell us a lot to be said for faster, assuming Damn. you can handle the resulting power and heat issues, which, frankly, we haven't always done the best job at. Part of the reason for that is, historically, 
Our process for setting CPU and GPU frequencies has relied on some heavy-duty guesswork with regards to how much electrical power games will consume and how much heat will be produced as a result inside of the console. Power consumption varies. So I just did the math. Their SSD when is I only like 13% faster. Pro, I know or their the I/O is only 13% faster. So we're looking at what? But power isn't simply maybe one, quality. maybe two seconds it's difference in end loading. What's being displayed? And probably not even that. It's counter. Probably not even that. Processing dense geometry typically consumes less power than processing simple geometry, which is. I suspect why Horizon's map screen, with its low triangle count, makes I just hate that he's making excuses through his presentation about our process different on parts. Like, well, this is hard. Like, like, no, just tell us what it does. You don't gotta make excuses. Power consumption during the entire this is what you got to work with, motherfuckers. Which is to say, the worst case scene in the worst case game, and prepare a cooling solution that we think will be quiet at that power level. If we get it right, fan noise is minimal. If we get it wrong, the console will be quite loud for the higher power games, and there's even a chance that it might overheat and shut down if we misestimate power too badly. PlayStation 5 is especially challenging because the CPU supports 256-bit native instructions that consume a lot of power. These are great here and there, but presumably only minimally used. Or are they? If we plan for major 256-bit instruction usage, we need to set the CPU clock substantially lower or noticeably increase the size of the power supply and fan. So after much discussion, we decided to go with a very different direction. Is it not going to sound like a jet engine anymore? We built a GPU with 36 CUs. Mind you, our DNA 2 CUs are large. Each has 62% more transistors than the CUs we were using on PlayStation 4. So if we compare transistor counts, 36 RDNA2 CUs equates to roughly 58 PlayStation 4 CUs. It is a fairly sizable GPU. Then we went with a variable frequency strategy for PlayStation 5, which is to say we continuously run the GPU and CPU in boost mode. We supply a generous amount of electrical power and then increase the frequency of GPU and CPU until they reach the capabilities of the system's cooling solution. It's a completely different paradigm. Rather than running at constant frequency and letting power vary based on the workload, we run at essentially constant power and let the frequency ba vary based on the workload. We then tackle the engineering challenge of a cost-effective and high-performance cooling solution designed for that specific power level. In some ways, it becomes a simpler problem because there are no more unknowns. There's no need to guess what power consumption the worst-case game might have. As for the details of the cooling solution, we're saving them for our teardown. I think you'll be quite happy with what the engineering team came up with. So how fast can we run the GPU and CPU with this strategy? The simplest approach would be to look at the actual temperature of the silicon die and throttle the frequency on that basis. But that won't work. It fails to create a consistent PlayStation 5 experience. It wouldn't do to run a console slower simply because it was in a hot room. So rather than look at the actual temperature of the silicon die, we look at the activities that the GPU and CPU are performing and set the frequencies on that basis, which makes everything deterministic and repeatable. While we're at it, we also use AMD's SmartShift technology and send any unused power from the CPU to the GPU so it can squeeze out a few more pixels. The benefits of this, this strategy are quite large. Running a GPU at 2 GHz was looking like an unreachable target with the old fixed frequency strategy. With this new paradigm, we're, we're able to run way over that. In fact, we have to cap the GPU frequency at 2.23 GHz so that we can guarantee that the on-chip logic operates properly. 36 CUs at 2.23 GHz is 10.3 teraflops, and we expect the GPU to spend most of its time at or close to that frequency and performance. Similarly, running the CPU at 3 GHz was causing headaches with the old strategy. But now we can run it as high as 3.5 GHz. In fact, it spends most of its time at that frequency. That doesn't mean all games will be running at 2.23 GHz and 3.5 GHz. When that worst case game arrives, it will run at a lower clock speed, but not too much lower. To reduce power by 10%, it only takes a couple of percent reduction in frequency, so I'd expect any downclocking to be pretty minor. 
All things considered, the change to a variable frequency approach will show significant gains for PlayStation gamers. The final of our three principles was about finding new dreams. It's important for us on the hardware team to find new ways to expand or deepen gaming, and that's what led us to a focus on 3D audio. As players, we experience the game through the visuals, through audio, and through the feedback we receive from the controller, such as rumble or haptics. Personally, I feel a game is just dead without audio. Visuals are, of course, important, but the impact of audio is huge as well. At the same time, the audio team on a game project has to do a lot with a little. For example, on PlayStation 4, there's fierce competition for the Jaguar CPU cores. Audio typically ends up getting just a fraction of a core. That's not much of a computational resource, particularly when you consider that the visuals run at 30 or 60 frames a second, but audio processing needs to happen at almost 200 times a second. So, it's been tough going making forward progress on audio with PlayStation 4, particularly when PlayStation 3 was such a beast when it came to audio. The SPUs in Cell were almost a perfect device for audio rendering. Simple pipelined algorithms could really take advantage of asynchronous DMA and frequently reached 100% utilization of the floating point unit. There's unfortunately nothing comparable on PlayStation 4. Probably the most dramatic progress in the PlayStation 4 generation has been with virtual reality. The PSVR hardware shit, has its yeah. own audio unit. It supports about 50 pretty decent 3D sound sources. And this provided a hint as to where we could go with audio, as well as some valuable experience. Not to oversimplify, but here were our goals for audio on PlayStation 5. The first goal was great audio for everyone, not just VR users or soundbar owners or headphone users. That meant audio had to be part of the console. It couldn't be a peripheral. The second goal was to support hundreds of sound sources. We didn't want developers to have to pick and choose what sounds would get 3D effects and which wouldn't. We wanted every sound in the game to have dimensionality. And finally, we wanted to really take on the challenges of presence and locality. Now, when we say presence, we mean the feeling that you're actually there. You've entered the matrix. It's not, of course, something we thought we could perfectly achieve, but the idea was that if we stopped using just a rain sound and instead used lots of 3D audio sources for raindrops hitting the ground at all sorts of locations around you, then at some point your brain would take a leap and you'd begin to have this feeling, this feeling of real presence inside the virtual world of the game. This has the capacity to affect your appreciation of the game, just like music in a game does. The concept of locality is simpler. It's just your sense of where the audio is coming from, to the right of you, behind you, above you. This can immerse you further in the game, and it can also directly enhance the gameplay. To use Dead Space as an example, I know, old school, you're fighting enemies in fairly dark, spooky locations. Back in the day, if you played the game using the TV speakers, you could tell that there was one last enemy growling and hunting you down, but it was difficult to tell quite where that enemy was. With headphones, you could tell that the enemy was somewhere on the right, which lets you deduce, if you couldn't see it, that it must be somewhere behind and to your right. But with 3D audio with good locality, the idea is you know the enemy is precisely there, and you turn, and you take it out. So. How do we know where a sound is coming from in the first place? Well, all those bumps and folds in the ear have a meaning, evolutionarily speaking. Based on what direction the sound is coming from, sound waves bounce around inside the ear, there's some constructive and destructive interference, and the result is a change in volume. The phase of the sound also shifts, depending on what path the sound wave took to reach the ear canal. These volume changes and phase shifts are different for each direction and also vary depending on the frequency of the sound. Head size and head shape also impact the sound in a similar fashion. The way that the sound changes based on direction and frequency can be encoded in a table called the Head Related Transfer Function, or HRTF. Here's part of one. The vertical axis is the frequency. The horizontal axis is the direction, front, back, left, right, and the color gives the degree of attenuation of the sound at that frequency. The HRTF is as unique to an individual as a fingerprint is. In fact, you're looking you're at mine right now. Right now being... Here's how we measure an HRTF. We've taken hundreds of people through this process. 
We put a microphone in the subject's left and right ear canals, and then sit the subject down in the middle of an array of 22 speakers. We then play an audio sweep from each speaker as we rotate the subject. Y'all still here? In the course of 10 or 20 minutes, we're able to sample the HRTF at over 1,000 locations. Using an HRTF yeah, I'm still here, bro. audio creates unparalleled quality, but it's Mental. computationally expensive. Just make sure. The simplest way to use an HRTF is to process a sound source to make it appear as if it's coming from one of those thousand locations we sample. Unfortunately, if this man says unfortunately one more time, that's what I'm saying. He's he's he's, he's making ex transforms excuses for the system for over and over project. and over again. It that's a lot of multiplies. Like this computational. I've been hearing for months about how our strategy. Meant we because we hit these roadblocks, we did this instead. And we hit this roadblock, so we did this instead. Audio. We hit this roadblock. Like, Why? We're referring to Why? Why are you compromising? Algorithms Figure it. Run on it as Tempest 3D. How much do you think this the meaning is going of 3D to cost? Audio and it's going to be cheap be because you, he's talking about all, all the corners they cut. Really so it's obviously going to be cheap. Bro, that, that SSD the and then intensity of experience oh, like, I think that's going to drive the cost up, man. I, I honestly yeah, that, that's the only thing, though, is the SSD. They cut corners everywhere else that they could. That's what they're telling us. They're telling us right now, we couldn't do this, so this is what we did. We couldn't do this, so this is what we did. Like, they're talking about audio right now, and they're, they're making excuses for audio right now. Like, Xbox just said, well, you know what? Audio is tough. Just like we'll just put uh, audio, a dedicated audio chip. DMA, just they're working, a, they're working around it and Our trying to find ways. That it would have more they're, they're leaning on their engineering CPU, thanks to the ability that a GPU can achieve, and that it would be more efficient than our GPU thanks to the SPU-like architecture. But see, we didn't hear any of these excuses when Xbox was talking about their their 3D of the CU. They were just like because they just they, they just decided to use a dedicated up, audio chip. They're not they're not, the they're not doing that. They're not using a dedicated audio chip. They're not. They're using software software combined. Yeah. If we were to use the same they're, algorithm they're as PSVR, that's enough for something like 5,000 sound sources. But of course, we want to use more complex algorithms, and we don't need anything like that number of sounds. It would have been wonderful if a simpler strategy, such as using Dolby Atmos peripherals, could have achieved our goals, but we wanted 3D audio for all, not just wow. licensed sound bars or the like. We could have used Dolby we Atmos. Many hundreds of sound sources, Why not didn't just you? the 32 that Atmos supports. And finally, we wanted to be able to throw an overwhelming amount of processing power at the problem, and it wasn't clear what any peripheral might have inside of it. In fact, with the Tempest engine, we've even got enough power that we can allocate some to the games, to the extent that games want to make use of convolution reverb and other algorithms that are either computationally expensive or need high bandwidth. But the primary purpose of the Tempest engine remains. So basically, like if we just keep it simple. Now, 3D audio is a the major. PlayStation 5 is a weaker console. Topic. It's safe to say that, that had no to cut one corners, so they're going to have to the use. And the set of algorithms that have to be invented to, to other resources other than gaming, such as 3D audio, is and immense. Other bullshit. For example. Use of HRTFs in games is quite complex. Before, I talked about Basic. making a sound source appear as if it's coming uh, from one of those thousand HRTF sample locations. But for high quality 3D game audio, we have to handle other possibilities. The sound source might not be at one of the thousand HRTF sample locations, so we have to blend the HRTF data from the closest locations that we have sampled. The sound source might be moving, which needs very special handling as that blend keeps changing and that can cause phase artifacts in the resulting audio. Or the sound source might have a size to it, meaning it should feel as if it's coming from an area rather than a single point. There's also whole categories of approaches to be handled. 3D audio can be implemented using individual processing of 3D sound sources. But alternatively, ambisonics can be used for 3D audio. Ambisonics being somewhat like the spherical harmonics used in computer graphics. And finally, there's audio devices. The player might be using headphones or TV speakers or have a higher end surround sound set up with six or more speakers, all of which need different approaches. That's a lot of variations. It's nice to have the computational resources of the Tempest engine, but it's clear that achieving our ultimate goals with 3D audio is going to be a multi-year, step-by-step process. Having said that, headphone audio implementation is largely complete at this time. Uh, it was a natural. So your audio is not going to be complete at launch. Exactly what each ear hears, Good to know. and therefore the Good to algorithmic know. development and implementation are more straightforward. 
for TV speakers and stereo speakers, we're in the process of implementing virtual surround sound. The idea being that if you're sitting in a sweet spot in front of the TV, then the sound can be made to feel as if it's coming from any direction, even behind you. Virtual surround sound has a lot in common with 3D audio on headphones, but it's more complex because the left ear can hear the right speaker and vice versa. We have a basic implementation of virtual surround sound up and running. We're now looking at increasing the size of that sweet spot, which is to say making the area you need to be in to feel the 3D effect larger. And we're also working to That's boost cool. the sense of locality. All right, go on. Headphone audio is the current gold standard for 3D audio on PlayStation 5, but we're going to see what we can do to bring virtual surround sound to a similar level, after which we'll start in on setups with more speakers, such as six-channel surround sound. It's now to the point where some of the PlayStation 5 games in development are extensively using these systems. One of the game demos allows you to toggle between conventional PlayStation 4 style stereo audio and our new 3D audio. I listened with just an ordinary pair of over the ear headphones and wow, I could feel a difference. 3D audio has that dimensional feel to it. Conventional stereo audio feels smashed flat by comparison. The improvement is obvious. So, a big advancement, but have I entered the matrix? Does my brain believe I'm really there? Like I was talking about earlier when I explained our target of presence. Well, the answer is no, but you've probably caught on to what's missing here, namely whose HRTF was being used. It wasn't mine, it was the default HRTF. The audio team analyzed the hundreds that they measured and chose the one they felt was the closest fit to the total game playing audience. This shows a, a piece of the default HRTF on the left and my HRTF on the right. You can see that the general features are much the same, but the details We are already quite passed different. 52 minutes, so with the default same HRTF, 52 as I said, the 3D audio sounds pretty great. When I use my HRTF, though, Yo, the audio reaches audio a higher level more fucking of love than this damn which system. Is to say you. That when I using don't like it. And my HRTF, I occasionally get fooled and even think a sound is coming from the real world when it's actually coming from the game. A corollary to this is that there are a few people whose HRTFs are sufficiently far from the default HRTF, that's the red dot here, that they can toggle between PS4 style and PS5 style audio and not sense much difference. I've had a few people describe the PlayStation 5's 3D audio as sounding like a bit better stereo audio. Presumably they're the ones at the very edges of this diagram. Which means what HRTF you're using is key. I'd like everyone to be able to experience what I'm experiencing, but obviously it's not possible to measure the HRTF of every PlayStation user. That means HRTF selection and synthesis are going to be big topics going forward as the Tempest technology matures. At PlayStation Yo, Kofi's 5, gonna cry we offer you a choice of five this. HRTFs. There's a, a simple test where you pick the one that gives you the best locality. That's just the first step, though. This is an open-ended research topic. Maybe you'll be sending us a photo of your ear, and we'll choose a neural network to pick the closest HRTF in our library. Maybe you'll be sending us a video of your ears and your head, and we'll make a 3D model of them and synthesize the HRTF. Maybe you'll play an audio game to tune your HRTF. We'll be subtly changing it as you play and home in on the HRTF that gives you the highest score, meaning that it matches you the best. This is a, a journey we'll all be taking together over the next few years. Ultimately, we're committing to enabling everyone to experience that next level of realism. Hopefully, I've been able to illustrate a bit about our design and decision-making process today and why PlayStation 5 has the feature set that it does. Now comes the fun part. We get to see how the development community takes advantage of that feature set. I'm hoping for the completely unexpected. Will it come from audio, ray tracing, the capabilities of the SSD, or something else? I guess we'll find out soon enough. Thank you for your time. So third-party developers are going to have to develop down to the PlayStation 5. And they still don't show us a system like I said they wouldn't. If anything, they're going to show us a logo. Ha ha ha. Uh... Yo, is the show over? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, I, could, I don't know how I don't know how y'all do it, man. Ah, damn. They didn't even show what it looked like. This is. Bro. I, I, I knew, a... I knew that when he was talking about 
the fan and then he said we will we will leave that to the breakdown i knew from that moment i knew they're not going to show anything here's the thing though they spent more time on 3d software audio than they did talking about the rest of the system i have an issue with that uh my issue my issue is this was for the wrong crowd but I, I was I was overhearing y'all while I was doing some work, and I think for Farrell was talking about a lot of uh, I think what you said that there's a lot of excuses made or a lot of shortcuts made. Apparently, um, the system uh, is going to be four hundred or something. Oh, while... they gave the price. They gave the price. No, they didn't give the price. No, 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 no. Apparently, apparently. No, but but I mean like. Some people are saying. So it's not it's not full backwards compatible, right? Is that confirmed no. or not? It's, just, it's uh, not. It's not full backwards compatible. What they did was they they put they built PS4 architecture into the chip, mm. but the chip is still too powerful to run PS4 games. So they have to custom, um, they have to customize the game for. Them. So they said about a hundred games will be ready at launch. I see. Okay. So, so that, that that's weird. All right. Um. Yeah, also. Uh, Rach, I mean, it's supposed to be ten point something um, teraflops ten, apparently, yeah. but it's it's ten point two eight. Let's just call it ten because yeah, Xbox is one right, right, five. This is it. But right, right, but but apparently it, it doesn't maintain that. It's overclocked. Well, the but issue the is, is that it's running at ten ten teraflops, but the way that he explained it, it doesn't hit so, it every time. Yeah, it, it's not it's not going to be able to hit it because it's going to have to dedicate itself to doing other things mm. it's, it's also using not locked clocks like yeah that's what i mean the clock, the, it's not stable yeah. it's fluctuate yeah, it's not, you're it's, not gonna it, it's it can't be stable because the gpu has to it has to make up for so many other deficiencies in the system yeah, I'm yep. just doing, we're just doing a quick highlight because we're going to be going over this um in vgp and just some so of the things i'm reading think, do you think they will be making a playstation 5 pro I think so that's a possibility. I, I I they, think they, so, because it's way will, weaker. They will, but the thing is, is uh, I mean, it's not gonna come out. It's not gonna come out for at least three, three years. years. Yeah, yeah three. at least three years. And by then, I mean, uh, how many deficiencies are you actually gonna make up for? Like, are you gonna put in a dedicated audio chip? That's like, another thing too. Was it no yeah. like that as well? And the ray tracing is apparently yeah. iffy. I don't, I don't know. I, I gotta wait for DF the uh, digital founder to break it down. I'm not the tech guy, but I'm just hearing and wa and reading stuff, and it's it seems like the, it's disappointing. It seems, yeah, I mean it's not the same. I know for PlayStation games they don't care. It's all about the games, which it should be. But start of the gen, I wanted it to be more powerful, but I guess at least it's faster, right? So yeah, it's 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 faster, but the the main thing that I'm that uh, that I'm getting from looking at this is that developers are going to have to develop down. To the PlayStation 5 based on what they're saying. I was hoping the systems would be a little bit more comparable so that you know you just make the game and it comes out on both. But it just it seems like you're gonna develop down a little bit. But sorry, so the key thing here is what's the I think the price point's the next factor, right? So if the yeah. apparently a lot of people saying Series X is 600 and if PlayStation 5 is 400 to 500, I think they're trying to. Maybe save costs go five hundred. It depends. Think, what what I, if Series X drops to five hundred? Then it's a big I think, like. I think the highest you can sell that at is three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. I, I, I think that's the highest you can get. And Fourth. how much can you? I don't know. Sell that uh, the Series X. I think be, no, I, no more than I, six. It can't be no more than I six. I think. I think being with. I think being with the first year, the first two years of games, you're pretty much gonna be able to play everything on the x that you can play on the uh on the uh series x i think they can hit 700 because i that's cause I feel crazy like, bro. I, I, no it is it is crazy it is crazy but i feel like um i feel like people who already have an x will be will feel comfortable waiting for the price to drop and people who are just that hardcore gamer point. they'll feel comfortable going and getting it right away because they're already a hardcore gamer like they don't care so, so I feel like, you so think? I, oh, god, my bad. No, I, I'm just saying. I I feel like <clears throat> Xbox what? made the X the way that they made it, with that in mind, that they uh, knew that this Series X was probably going to be a little expensive. 
another thing in, to keep uh, in mind, what about the Lockhart, right? How much weaker yeah, is it and how say, close is now it? That, I believe now that Lockhart will be uh, worse than PlayStation 5. I don't. I, mean, I don't think. I, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think the. I don't think the lock card. Will, I, I, I think. I don't think. I don't think it's gonna be three teraflops slower than the than the than the Scarlet. I I don't. I think it'll be right there where PlayStation Five is. Could be. I think it'll, I think it'll be right there at ten. It's possible. If, if anything, I don't. Could, could, I mean to go down to to go down to nine teraflops from twelve? That's a big drop. But who would buy a console for seven hundred dollars? A if lot you, of you, your extremists, the, ex, the extremists your, will. Your, your, your hardcore base. That's all. That's all you need is your hardcore base to buy it. Especially with the fact that games are now, their games are available on PC, and you can still play them on the X. You don't necessarily have to sell the Series X console, you know, for the for their launch to be a success. They can the thing, still. still the thing push is, this software. This is gonna be an interesting like game plan that Microsoft is going with. Firstly, I mean they announced their their specs and stuff the day before Sony's, and now you're seeing it is like damn, it's not you know what I mean. Like they did a Sony, honestly, if you look at it. They 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 did it knowing that their system was much stronger. stronger. Yeah, exactly. They, they knew that. That's what I was telling y'all in the chat yesterday. You, I said you did X, say it. I said Xbox. I said Xbox did this no like they did it with a lot of confidence. They know that their system is much stronger. But that they I mean that's it. that's an old school Sony move, so it's interesting. Yeah. They dropped they dropped it the day before, and then now you hear this and it's like, all right. And then apparently Xbox is supposed to do another show, so Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Are, do you think that show they're gonna drop the lock card? Did it be like, all right, you see what the PlayStation, this is our weaker console, see how it compares. That'll be interesting. What if their weaker console is only eleven teraflops and it's uh, like still stronger? That no, no, no. There's no way. Nah, that's that's getting ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. What, if, I, what, what, if, what if it's 11 teraflops take out the dedicated audio chip you know you you know you you know you do a little work mm. around what if lockhart is digital only that could be the case i think it might be it might be uh um, well, because that the, the one, sad the one thing I was, just the same the price thing, the one thing i was saying that people aren't necessarily considering with the with the xbox uh series x is the cloud integration like how deep is the cloud integration? What is that? What is that going to be overall? Because I think a lot of the power of the Series X is that they're not talking about is also going to be factored into X Cloud. Oh no, they're they're talking. Okay, they're talking about X Cloud today. Ask, not doing it. That's that's a, but that's what I'm saying. Up to this point, they haven't. So like we're getting like all these specs and everything, and we're looking at the Xbox Series X just as the Xbox Series X, but we're not looking at it in combination with X Cloud. I think. Yeah. I, I think the I'm Xbox is much more powerful than we realize because of the power of X Cloud being integrated into the system. Right. I think we're also going to see how they're going to pull off um, Flight Simulator as far as like being able to unpack all those assets at once. Because like, cloud like, well, for apparently. instance, for instance, just, um, what what if five, what if like three to five years in the X Cloud, you no longer have to have um, Xbox One games on your hard drive. You can just stream them from X Cloud. Hey. You know, like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, there's different things that we're not cons- like. They're putting a lot of investment in the. Oh, X-Cloud yo, yo, did, did you guys did you guys hear that though? Hold on, hold on. Did you guys hear? They're they're replacing the um the Xbox One S with the Series X's on the racks for X Cloud. That's crazy. But also, you need to remember this. No, I, mean, I don't. Think, I mean, Series X as the X Cloud. That's what uh, those reports. No, 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 no. But what I'm talking about Series X has also that uh, dedicated. Uh, uh, SSD drive that's going to be costly as well. If only we, got, we gotta see the price for that, and, and you need and you need that to play uh, the Series X game. Same with PlayStation, apparently. You have to, it has to be Sony certified. We don't even know what that means yet. But. Only difference is it's not proprietary. Mm. Yeah, and the other thing is there are no Series X exclusives for at least a year, so it's not something you have to worry about. Oh no, this shit, this shit is crazy. But um, I, before on before we leave, man, I, Omar, you being the primarily Sony guy here, what is your overall take of this? Are you disappointed? Are you excited? Are you still dumbfounded, waiting for more information? I want to hear um, from you real quick. Do you want me to spoil it? Be honest. Because- 
Be honest. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a real, real, a real, real quick I'm snippet. A, a real quick snippet. And we'll... On Tick Game. Okay, give give a teaser. Don't finish. Okay. And write it. This was not for the uh, for the correct crowd. Mm-hmm. They targeted the wrong crowd. Despite the fact that this was already planned, like uh, this is something called uh, CDC or something, conference, mm-hmm. and it was already supposed to be planned, how they talk about specs, they worded very wrong. They made it seem like they were going to have a legit breakdown. Not this breakdown, but how Series X did. That Mm -hmm. level of breakdown. And they bungled it. Because for me, I have no issue with the game, with the console being weaker. That's for me, no problem. Okay. I already played on my PlayStation 4 while the X existed. In that sense. Yeah. My, but my point is, I am supposed to understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> but when I need uh, the picture that I sent to you, all of you, every time they saw something I recognize, which is, for example, a uh, temp teraflop, or not that I even know what the freaking teraflop means, or R- R- RDN. Uh, to, A2.0. Uh, yep. Yeah, indeed. Like, for example, I, I don't even have no idea what that means, but at least I know it should be better than one, for example. So, in that sense, you're not speaking, talking to me. To me, who would then, after this, would go to the PlayStation, pop in Horizon Zero Dawn on God of War or, or Spider Man, and just focus on the gameplay. That's how it should have, they should have out of gameplay. Show us mm. gameplay or the the console. Show us the controller. Show us the de- the new dedicated buttons that you were talking about. Show us how the let us uh, see how you're going to make the fun quiet. Not with talk, but with actual gameplay. Um. Uh, for example, testing. Like, show us uh, what's called Godfall. If you don't want to show any new game, show us Godfall running on PlayStation 5 and making zero sound. Like, for example, something like that. That They should have spoke to their customers before they spoke to the developers. They should have had... They they spoke to the developers, and that's wrong. They should have spoke to the customers probably a week ago. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Like, two weeks ago, they should have have dropped, you know... No, no, no. This is what our system... Looks they like, should have dropped it now, like what? The fact that they didn't, re- the, re- the fact that they haven't shown their system yet, kind of has me concerned that they don't have their final form factor together yet. I think they're still having issues with the fan. With the fan? Yes. Based on what they were saying, because they're saying they're still having it, like heating and stuff issues. So I, I'm I'm thinking that they still have they're still having some sort of heating issues. I, I'm 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 actually a little concerned that this system may be delayed, that it may not that, come out this year. Okay, so you know what I would do, I would do if I was huh? Sony, I would legit delay delay the trip, to, and go back to from working from scratch. You can't because, you can't go back no, to scratch. That's too you much have, money, you have, man. You have, you have R&D, to, man. You, you have to, you're, they're going gonna to have to release it as is, but, but they can still they can still adjust the form that. factor. But they they can't they can't like what the PlayStation Five is is what it is right now. Like but developers it, are already developing for what it is right now. Like no, they can't go back. But All they this can, is not going to sell. Not only that, with the rumors of their game coming to PC, and we don't know if it's going to be day one or not. They are going to be in worse shape than before and i'm predicting and it's just me predicting they're going to reach playstation day playstation 3 day with this shit because well, the not only is, playstation have... 3 was 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 a was a ultra powerful system though so it was, it was easy for them to, it was easy for them to recover because they started releasing games that looked amazing it was more powerful than this, the 360 which is harder to develop but with yeah. this, they are not going to be able to recover from it. Because not only do they have the weaker hardware, 
they also have a weaker hardware that is going to put their games on PC, which would also negate many sales for people who want to consider to buy PlayStation. Think, oh, no, freak. screw that. Either I will go to, to Xbox or I'll just stick to PC. Uh, so, what, yeah, matter, what matters? What matters is the price, man. Every in the beginning launch, it matters the price. Price even is the most the important. Price, even with the price, you also need to, to remember they are talking about that SSD drive. Mm. But we don't know uh, how much it's gonna cost for extra then, storage. Not only that, I don't even know if you need that to play PlayStation Five games or not. If they if said you it. Can, you need. You, you need. You, you, you need. You need you specialized or specific Sony. SSDs, uh, yeah, NVMEs, whatever. Part. But can you play PlayStation game without that SSD drive? Yes or no? PS, I don't know. They said PS5, to play PS5 games, you need the specific SSD that they certify, just like Xbox. So, so <laughs> the same boat. Are we on the same fucking boat then? Yeah, pretty much. So then, uh, Let's see how much those cost. Both cost of PlayStation 5 is going to cost around 400 see, this and, is four, what... and 150 Maybe two hundred even for the SSD drive, and we'll mm. go around but five hundred, is... six hundred, and maybe this is why they 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 had to um but, take away uh, expensive stuff. But the thing is, Omar, honestly, honestly, Omar, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't panic or overblow it. Because I've been, I've been kind of, I've been saying this since, since the VGP podcast started. You okay, did. I've, been, I've been, I've been saying this from the jump. There's a big difference at Microsoft now from the changes in CEOs. The new CEO, who I can never get his fucking name right, Saudi and Nadella, yeah, Nadella. Yeah, 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 that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to like say it a hundred times in my sleep or something before I get it right. <laughs> but the thing is, once he took over. It's like Nutella, he, but Nadella. That's all. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he uh, he actually he opened up the full budget, the full Microsoft budget to Microsoft to 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 the Xbox Studio. He said, "You have a blank check." Xbox never had a blank check before. Like even when Bill Gates was there, he believed yeah. in the Xbox and he gave it more funding than you know than a lot of people thought it deserved. But you know. He saw the potential of gaming at at the, the the reach that it has and the sales that it has, and he gave them a blank checkbook. So Sony does not have the resources as a corporation that that Microsoft does. So, but how can Microsoft have way more resources than Sony when Sony dominated the gen? It's, no, we're not. We're, no, no, no. You're talking about Sony. You're talking about the parent company. There's yeah, no, there's no comparison. I mean, we're PlayStation. Talk, we're, uh, my yeah. bad. Yeah, PlayStation yeah. Good. Microsoft as a whole still makes way more money. That's what than I'm Sony. saying. Yeah. It's, it's it's the, the parent the company, budget, man. The budget, the budget, the budget that Sony has does not compare to the budget that Microsoft has right now. That's why you saw Microsoft buy all these studios up. You, you like, you've been like, we've been watching this investment, and we've been given xbox all this shit this entire time but i've been telling y'all i'm like yo this is coming they're they're they've been they, they've been saving everything I know. for this generation right here and we're starting to see it like we're seeing that this console is much more powerful than the playstation 5 and now at e3 they're gonna put on a show and that's why sony didn't show that's why sony's not showing up because they know xbox is gonna show out in two months they might show out with games that's not going to come out. They might go with we'll the Sony see, method of man. these games we'll are coming see. out. We'll see. That's the only years. thing they got. I mean, they they knocked everything off the uh, off the talk shit list. Like you know what I mean? Weaker yeah. hard drive from the start. They already crushed yeah, that what, back to back they, they, consoles. Been, they, 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 it's now been, up to the games for those those who yeah. like hardcore gamers. I like they, a whole bunch of different games. For for those like Omar, to. for those like everybody else, they need to show the games, the mature games that will convince people to come over. So my bad. Go yeah. ahead, bro. And and that's what's gonna happen at E3. They are gonna they are gonna put on a show at E3. Like they like I said, they might show a bunch of shit that's not coming out for two years, like like Sony does. But they're gonna put on a show. Like they they've been building up for this, and Sony knows it. That's why they've been making the moves that they've made because they don't necessarily have the money. So they got to be a little bit smarter with how they do it. Um, how can they do it then? They they they're because they're 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 leaning on their relationships. 
they're they're leaning on their relationships. But the thing is, Phil is going over to Japan and he's building have, relationships. Yeah, they have they have better they have better networks. Like they're because they're in more countries well, at the moment. I mean, so it's fine. It's, deal, like it's not deal. doom and gloom. But what it is it's is not. a resurgence of Xbox, which yeah, I've been they, saying in my own personal videos, and it's gonna like, be interesting, man. Thank you, Sony like, PlayStation I'm, fanboys. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not saying that PlayStation's, you know, going the going by the wayside. That's that's not even this conversation. No. But we just have to understand that Xbox is coming out with the haymakers, and and PlayStation is going to have to weather them. And I mean, and here here's the other thing: it, Xbox can afford to take a loss on their hardware if they so choose. If the they pricing is key, them, man. I don't I don't think you understand how big that is. I think PlayStation is. My my bad knows my you were talking. No, that's why it's not it's not a necessity. Like it's gonna come down to what Lockhart's priced at. But if they want to, they could really be like same price. What you gonna do? Like Yeah, yeah but you know but you know I know a couple things. Microsoft is gonna have some really great trade in deals. I already yeah, know that off the rip. They have, they, have, they they have the they have the budget deals now or the uh, monthly cell phone payments. They have it now for uh yeah. for for people on Amazon in their Windows Windows store. Microsoft yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna have some great trade in deals. They're gonna have some great month to month payment deals. They're gonna they're gonna make they're gonna find ways to make it easy for you to put a Series X in your house, outside mm -hmm. of dropping seven hundred dollars pay monthly off the rip. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're, Series X in the yeah, house. You pay, of you pay monthly. Yeah, they, they'll they'll do oh. like they, they'll do yeah. they'll do fifty dollars a month. With yeah. free with free Xbox Live and yep, free Game yep. Pass for two years. They'll it's uh they already they already did it with the they already did it with the One X like so they have what payment plans it's, it's they 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 completely transferred to the phone model like you know how yeah. you have phones today you pay monthly until you pay it off that's exactly yeah. what Xbox and Microsoft well, have already is, done they're they're letting you pay and they got monthly. upgrade plans and they have upgrade plans too yeah but the thing is they're doing it but they're also giving you free Xbox Live and Game Pass at the same time they're not that's making true. you. They're not making you pay monthly pay extra. and then pay. So it's all built in. So yeah, pay this for two years. You're going to get Game Pass and Xbox Live at the same time. So really, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, bro. They're, they're going to find a way to get that Xbox in your home. That's like, to me, the price, whether, whether it's $700, whether it's the first thousand dollar system, they're going to find a way to get it into your homes and they're going to do a great job of marketing different options to get it into your home they are i i i am not I, like me i'm concerned about the price point because i know i'm not financing the system i know i'm gonna buy it straight cash so if it's 700 800 dollars <sighs> if it's like, that high i don't know if i could put it down for i might just invest in a graphics card i'm not even gonna lie to you because i was uh, i was hearing sick humor talk and even he said i don't think it's going to be 500 it's going to be above five hundred, six hundred above even. I think, I think, I, I think it could touch seven hundred. I think y'all, y'all talk, y'all scaring people, man. Stop that talk, man. I think it could. Look but... how much they they sold the the X, and this is twice stronger than the X. And this is what I can't understand why people can't realize. Well, the thing that. is, no, the the, the price the, technology yeah. has gotten cheaper. The components the are not that expensive. It's yeah, just yeah, Nvidia's is fair. fucking greedy as hell. Greedy as hell. That's what that is. Yeah, about to say uh, that the 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 components used to make the X are a lot cheaper now than what they were two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But I, I, I think I, I think they could go that high. Do I think they will go that high? No, I think Xbox is gonna bite the bullet. All right, man. Well, I'm gonna end it there because I gotta get some work done. Listen, VGP yeah. Monday is gonna be a dope Thanks show. We're gonna have we're gonna have Chris's uh chris is right on a, play, a playstation pony himself it's gonna be interesting we'll be talking about a lot of playstation stuff a lot of xbox stuff neo 2 as well as uh uh old debate topic which first party uh which first parties have better the most genre because apparently chris chris uh chris Wright thinks playstation and we're about to also make him uh bend his knees on xbox consoles so anyway this is fc Vaughn. this is this is actually i'm gonna let y'all do your outro man go ahead omar Oh yeah, you can find me at Caraba underscore Chab on Twitter. Uh, and? Yeah, this was an abysmal show for <laughs> Sony. And uh, yeah, hey, I, I call it how it is. I'm not here to struggle show team. Your review, the, your I, reviews, I man. Customer. Yes, sir. And your your articles, my guy. Yeah, I'm going to 
write that. I put out one about uh, Bleach, how it's actually returning for the final arc, the anime is. So look that up if you want on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And uh, be on the lookout for two more articles. One about the Kingdom Hearts 3 debacle that uh, Square Enix uh, messed up. And the other one is how they bungled also Final Fantasy 15 because of greed and fake prompted. There it is, man. Pharaoh. Uh, yeah, it's your boy Pharaoh. You can find me on Twitter at Pharaoh Bizarre. Uh, Xbox and PSN at Bizarre 5000. Don't forget that Madden challenge. Yes. You guys want a fifteen dollar gift card? You could play me during the VGP show, get smashed, or you can play before. I don't know. FC Violent will set that up. I'm not worried sure. about that. But if you want to lose to me, <laughs> um, hit him up. Yes, sir. Definitely let me know, man. It's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna be talking. I'll probably be the commentary talking shit. And uh, Nubs, do you? Oh, I'm sorry, Jubei Sensei. There you go. Uh, so yeah, you can find me on uh, Xbox at Jubei X Sensei. Twitter and Instagram at Jude Sensei, um, Mixer and Twitch at Jude X Sensei. Um, once we get past this Madden phase, there, if anybody want to see me in fighters, once we uh, kind of get rolling with this, I'm with that too. Yes, I'm winning some money off. Me. <laughs> yes, sir. And last, I know Reg is over there, probably working. Um, he's still muted. You can find Reggie on uh, all of our all of our links to our Twitter is in the description below. I gotta update that because some of the stuff is no longer there. Anyway, again, this is FC Violent. This is the Vitamin G came G Gaming Crew. Uh, we see y'all Monday. Be easy. Peace out. Later. Keep it gaming. You already know how it is. Hey, uh, thanks for hosting on despite being at work. Yeah. Wh- I'm on the outside looking in.